Tri Nations 2020 team of the tournament. This is a late video. I got to admit, it's late, but I wanted to have like a proper look at the stats before doing a video. Just kind of instead of just doing it on kind of gut feeling, I wanted to look at the numbers to see which guys were surprising, uh, which guys maybe deserve a spot that we didn't at first glance see. Some of them are pretty predictable. Um, to be honest, I've only picked 14 because one position. I was really struggling with. I'll, I'll give you a few options for that position, but otherwise I've gone ahead and picked 15. I'll do a few special mentions as well, honorable mentions. But um, yeah, team of the tournament. Uh, I should say a big thank you to my wife actually, because she's a bit of an Excel whiz and she helped me out quite a lot with uh, the data extraction, which is a process just plain sucks to go through. It's fascinating to see the data at the end. But getting the data and manipulating it to a place where you can actually see everything you want to see, it really, really, really sucks. So thank you to her for spending her time to help me out with that. But um, yeah, here we go. 15, well, 14 guys, plus one optional. Uh, and you guys can let me know what you reckon as well. Loose head prop. I've gone with uh, Titus Chaparro from the, the Pumas. Loose head prop was kind of a tricky one to pick. I noticed that he he started in the two draws and the win over the All Blacks, and he he didn't start in the 38 0 loss. So maybe that's a factor in the Pumas' performances. 17 from 19 tackle tackles across the tournament. He had 10 run meters, which is nothing to write home about. Um, six penalties conceded overall is among one of the higher guys, but. I think he was um, he was pretty solid and pretty consistent across all the loose head props uh, in the tournament. For tight head prop, you get a guy who's a wee bit more dynamic. Tight head prop, I've gone with Taniela Tupo. And he honestly just does things other props just don't do, man. He's, he's a bit of a... I mean, I want to say freak, but in a good way. Honestly, he, he just does things. He only conceded three penalties across the entire tournament, which is less than the number of games he played. And if you've followed Tani Tupo's career for any length of time, you know discipline's an issue. So the fact that he's played more games than he conceded penalties is a bit of a minor miracle. Uh, he had 33 round meters. The next best prop was Laulala with 22, albeit Laulala played fewer games. Uh, so yeah, he had the most round meters of any prop. He had five defenders beaten. The next best prop had three. He had uh, the most passes of any prop. He just... He's just a dynamic, ball-carrying, tackle-beaten, running prop. And he can scrum. And he only can see the three penalties. So, yeah. Man, imagine how good he's going to be in, like, another five years. When he's into, like, proper mature prop territory. Hooker, I've gone with Julian Montoya from the Pumas. The line-out percentage for the Pumas was, like, 80% over the tournament, which is not phenomenal. But this guy plays, like, virtually 80 minutes every game. He stepped into Krevi's shoes and probably... You know, if Krivy was in the team, he wouldn't be starting ahead of Montoya at the moment. Uh, he had six meters run over four games, which is not a great return. Uh, only the one defender beat, but man, defensively, 41 out of 43 tackles is amazing. He had four turnovers, which is the second equal for the entire tournament. And he's a hooker. And there's sometimes when he was just like throwing his body on the line to like grab loose ball under pressure ahead of, I think his one quite well-known clip now where he beat Rico Iwane to the ball on the ground. And he shouldn't be beating Rico because he should be slower than Rico, but he just had that extra commitment. He did get a yellow card in the tournament as well, but overall, uh, pretty good. Locks, I've gone with Guido Petty. So man, we're, we're starting pretty heavy on the Pumas, guys. Uh, Petty is just one of the best locks in the world. I know he was uh, amongst all that kind of social media controversy stuff, but just looking at his numbers, man. 39 run meters across the uh, entire tournament. He's only like a few meters behind Patrick Tupolotu, who was like the top run meter lock, and uh, like a meter behind Matt Phillip, who was second. So he's in that kind of, like not many locks accumulate that many running meters. Most of them don't, but these there's a select handful that do. They play that way. So he's amongst those guys. He had two defenders beaten and a clean break. He had uh, six passes and an offload. He had 10 lineout wins, which makes him fourth over tournament, and he had three lineout steals. And that's the one area which is like gold 
he he does that amongst, as I said, the best guys in the world. He's no surprise, first equal for line-out steals in this competition. Very dangerous man come line-out time. And uh, 32 out of 35 tackles makes him fifth overall defensively. So pretty good shift. The Pumas guys get kind of a free pass on the tackles because they did a lot of defending in this in this tournament. Like it's, it's the style they played. So their guys tend to dominate the tackle numbers, but not all. Uh, alongside him, we're going with Sam Whitelock. 36 carries makes him second overall in the entire tournament for guys carrying the ball. So he's a busy, busy man um, for a guy his age as well. 27 out of 30 tackles is also up there in terms of defensive numbers. Uh, he had 24 passes, which is number one for a lock. So like I said, with his carries and with his passes, he really does get involved uh, quite a lot. He had three defenders beaten, 21 lineout wins as the number one lineout operator in the competition. He had one lineout steal and only conceded one penalty. So it was really good to see him back uh, in New Zealand rugby and seemingly back to his best form despite being the wrong side of 30. Uh, flankers, blindside, I went with Marcos Kremer. I know the, the Pumas guys play with like more like the South African style with the seven and six kind of the other way. But I think from memory, they don't even seem to swap sides. Like Matera and Crema tend to pack down like left and right. One always goes left, one always goes right. doesn't matter which side the scrum is on. That just seems to be the way they do it. Uh, but I think you'd say he plays a bit more like a blindside flanker than an open side. Not that it really matters. Either way, I've got him there, a blindside flank. 72 tackles. 72 is the number one tackler by a mile in this competition. Next is Hooper with 48, 46, 72 tackles. He missed eight. Uh, he had five turnovers, which is first equal. Maybe he is an open side flanker with these numbers. Uh, he had 18 run meters. He did concede nine penalties and get a yellow card. So discipline wise, he was amongst the worst guys in the tournament. Uh, but he still had seven line out wins, which is sixth equal. Uh, he was just an absolute machine man. 72 tackles and the next best is in the 40s. Is just madness. Uh, he's a proper big unit. He's still a young man as well. Again, imagine how good he's going to be in a few years. Very, very good player. Uh, open side, are gone with Michael Hooper. Like I said, um, he's second overall for tackles. Kremer's first. Hooper's second. 46 out of 54. Gives him an 85% success rate. And Hooper does like to go for a lot. Like, he throws himself into tackles where he's unlikely to be able to successfully complete the tackle but he slows somebody down, gets a hand on them, uh, you know, to maybe make somebody else have the tackle. So his numbers are always a slightly, slightly lower in terms of uh, his actual completion rate. He had 23 passes, so also very busy. Six defenders beaten. And when you compare him to some of the other guys, uh, like Kane, I think had one, Sam Kane. I think Matera had like four. Uh, he had a clean break. He had 89 run meters. Uh, he had one try. I mean, if I was looking at other open sides, I was looking at Sam Kane. Sam Kane did get more turnovers, but overall their numbers are pretty similar with Hooper just edging things like the clean, uh, not the clean breaks, the defenders beaten and the run meters. So, I mean, technically you should probably go for the guy with the more turnovers, but I've got another guy with turnovers in just a second. And that man is Adi Savia. I've gone with the number eight. Still, I still reckon I prefer him at seven, but he's never going to get the seven jersey with Sam Kane in the team. But Adi Savia... 120 run meters. He's the number one forward in the competition. Second was Hooper. So these guys are both like proper class. 13 defenders beaten is second overall in the entire competition. Two clean breaks, 16 passes, three offloads, 18 out of 19 tackles. So his tackle count is kind of low actually compared to some of the other guys. Like you're looking at Hooper in the 40s and Kramer in the 70s. But he makes up with the kind of with his offense. Four turnovers though is second equal in the in the competition, second equal overall. So he's letting maybe somebody else make the tackle while he jumps over to do the jackal. That seems to be a thing with him. Um, but yeah, I thought he was pretty good. Honestly, when I'm thinking which All Blacks players are like just that kind of next level above, he's often one of the first ones that comes to mind. Adi Savi is just a freak of nature as well, in a good way. Uh, backs, scrum half, I go on with Aaron Smith. The Pumas kind of rotated through a few different scrum halves. 
Uh, so it was essentially between him and Nick White, but I've gone with Aaron Smith. He had two try assists, which is first equal. Uh, he had 183 passes. I think he's lower than uh, Nick White's passes, but he only conceded one turnover the whole competition. One turnover conceded, whereas Nick White has eight. So slightly more risky play with Nick White. Uh, he only got seven run meters, though, and Nick White's got like 47. So if you want a guy, and I think Nick White caused the All Blacks a lot of problems when he was making those sniping runs, but Aaron Smith's service, like if you are picking a guy on their number one role, for a scrum half, it's their passing, right? His service is pretty bloody good, man. 9 out of 11 tackles, 12 kicks, whereas Nick White kicks like 20-something um, times, like 23. So, yeah, he's in, he's in the team for a slightly different reason. Like, the All Blacks did a lot of kicking off Bodie and some off Richie. So, Aaron Smith's not required to kick as much. But I thought overall, with the service that he provides the All Blacks, that quick ball... They look better when he's at nine. I know Perinara didn't have his best game when he played, like started, but yeah, Aaron Smith. Uh, Ten, I've gone with Nico Sanchez. You could go with Moonga because Moonga's got phenomenal ball and hand stats, but I mean, Sanchez is your number one point scorer with 43. He's got 12 penalties. He got a try. He had 18 out of 21 tackles. He's the number one guy for kicks, which is not necessarily a great thing. But it's just the way the Pumas were set up to play like, like right, like rock solid defense. Sanchez able to kick it clear, kick penalties from 50 meters, put little balls through for his wingers. Like, yeah, that's just, he's uh, such a key player in the way they were set up. Um, he had three defenders beaten, two clean breaks, and 66 round meters, only conceded one penalty. Top point scorer in the overall competition. Nico Sanchez. Uh, midfielders, now this is one area where I struggled. So at outside center, I went with Anton Leonard Brown. He was like a pretty consistent without being spectacular. 82 run meters, 23 out of 25 tackles, four offloads, put some third overall for offloads in the competition. If you've seen him play for the Chiefs, you know he offloads a ton. It's one of his kind of particularly good skill sets. Three defenders beaten and a clean break. So not like magical phenomenal numbers, but really good um like some of the like the aussie guys looked all right as well and inside center is the one where i couldn't make a call honestly i couldn't make a call. you got good hugh who was like again okay you got chocobares who played two games like i think his first game was like against the all blacks it's his debut they win he has really good defensive numbers but doesn't get a lot of ball um like i mentioned the aussie guys paisami and pataya like Paisami had 14 out of 23 tackles, which is not a great return. Uh, Paisami had five turnovers conceded. I think ALB had like three. But Paisami did have good run meter numbers. Uh, Pitaya, I remember his turnovers conceded were, were pretty horrendous as well. Like, you remember he blew that one try. Like, yeah, there were just kind of big red flags with those guys. So inside center, I don't know, man. I kind of left it blank. Yeah, not too sure, but there's a few guys who you who you could certainly could certainly go with. I've gone with ALB at outside. Uh, wingers, left winger went with Caleb Clark. Now Caleb Clark, uh, people have like gone through the full hype train with him, and then it's come back down to earth. Overall, his numbers look pretty good. 185 run meters is third overall. Ten defenders beaten his fourth overall. He scored a try. Four clean breaks, second overall. Seven out of seven tackles. And he did have like four turnovers conceded, which is like the one black mark. But overall, his numbers were pretty good. Even in the games where they kind of double teamed him to keep him quiet, he still put up decent numbers, I thought. So he's certainly a prospect, probably needs a bit of work, and teams are going to target him with that kind of massive performance he had in that one game at Eden Park. But yeah uh caleb clark's numbers and the the tri nations not just the, not talking about letters low separate numbers uh pretty good the other guy i've gone with is tom wright now tom wright is one guy that was kind of pleasing to see in the numbers because maybe i think your brain goes corabidi if you're thinking aussie wingers but i've gone with Wright. 140 run meters he's up there with the top guys six defenders beaten is also up there with the top guys uh, four clean breaks, I think is like second overall, only one turnover conceded and five out of seven tackles scored at least one try. 
didn't write it down. But yeah, Tom Wright was actually a really pleasant surprise to come into this level international and actually look pretty good. Like Corabetti was the number one run meter guy, but his tackle stats was like 13 out of 21 and he had five turnovers conceded. So when he, when he was bad, he was costly. I think he had a yellow card as well. Whereas Tom Wright, I thought overall was actually better value, at least on his stats. I don't know. Corabetti's a bit of a machine as well. I know, but he's a bit of risk reward. Uh, last one I've gone with is fullback, and it's almost by default that I go Bodie. And I know some people won't like Bodie. Uh, he did play one game at 10, but 104 run meters, solid, without being spectacular. Two try assists, which is first equal. Two defenders beaten, a clean break. 32 kicks is second overall behind Sanchez. Kicked a lot from fullback, but remember, he did play one game at 10. Uh, he has 40 passes, but again, he, it was just more than any other fullback. Remember, he played that one game at 10 where he had 17 of them. Uh, six offloads is number one in the competition for, for offloading the ball in the tackle. 11 out of 16 tackles is like okay without being great. You could go Carreras. He played pretty well for, for the Pumas. The Aussies, you could even put like Hodge at fullback if you wanted to, but he played uh, different games in different positions. So, yeah, that's the 15. 14 plus one, like undecided. Other guys who I thought worthy of mention, I mentioned Corabetti, I mentioned Carreras, Paisami and Pattaya, like had some really good areas, like Corabetti. Like you look at one column and you're like, man, number one by a mile. And you look at some other column, you're like, ooh, those numbers are not pretty. Uh, Matt Phillip has probably been robbed in terms of the locks. I could easily put him in with Whitelock or Petty and be still happy with that change. Sam Kane, you could easily put him in for Hooper, I think. Uh, Matera also had really good numbers, and who's going to forget that, you know, play for my country speech. Did I mention Delgi? Delgi was also really good. I mentioned Chocobares. I mentioned Goodhue. Um, oh, I should have mentioned Geronimo de la Fuente. I only played two games, but overall, really good numbers. If you're working it up by like average per game, he had really good numbers as well. So it is harder to pick the guys who only played two games, but yeah, that's it. Team of the tournament for the Tri Nations, late as it is, that is what it is. You guys, let me know your thoughts. Which players did you think performed well? Other guys you thought maybe could have been in the team of the tournament? Any of these guys you flat out reject as being some of the best players of the tournament? And um, yeah, thanks again to my missus for, for editing. If any of you guys want to support the channel for the work that goes on with all the bloody stat gathering, I would appreciate you taking a look at the Patreon page. Some people support the channel there. It's always much appreciated. Otherwise, the buy me a coffee, which is actually buy me a beer. Well, it's buy me a beer, but actually buy me a coffee. I'll put that link in the description as well. Um, had a bit of support that way over Christmas, which was also really pleasing. But um, yeah, cheers, guys. Take care of yourselves. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.